So we have a defined statement here known as IMP underscore RSP underscore length. This basically means impulse response length. We have to create this define. And the reason why I put it there is I'm going to define it over here in the main file. I'm going to say define and impulse response. The length is 29. So I'm going to have this here. And to make the impulse response this array accessible in the other file, we can just pull it and use the extern keyword. I'm going to bring it over here and say extern over here like this. And um, put a semicolon here. Let's rebuild and see if we have any errors. It's all good. So let's plot the impulse response and see. We're still going to use our plot signal function. And this time around, we're going to pass this impulse response as the array containing the signal and then the length of the array is impulse rsp length and we're going to put this here and um, we can come here like this the problem is it might be difficult to view the impulse response signal because it's in these are the values right 0 0.0018 0 0.000 0 0.015 it's going to be rather difficult to view it, but let's see what we come up with. Um, so let's go to the serial plotter. And this is what it looks like, very tiny. Um, so what we're going to do is actually, I'm going to multiply each value in the array by something like thousand. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to change our plot signal function just a little bit to help us view the impulse response more. So over here, it says serial print ln source uh, signal source array index i. I'm going to multiply each value by a thousand to help our serial plotter. If we are to view this somewhere, perhaps in MATLAB, it's going to be clearer, right? Because MATLAB allows us to zoom in much more, you know, deeper than the serial plotter over here allows us to do. So I'm just going to multiply each value by a thousand and let's see if that makes it more you know, more visible. I'm downloading onto my board. It's done. So we can come over here and then serial plotter. Good, excellent, excellent. So this is what the impulse response looks like. Just going to stretch this a bit. Right, so this is the impulse response we have. And we're going to convolve this with our input signal, which we saw earlier. And then we're going to view the results and see what it looks like, which we, which I'm saying is going to contain just a one kilohertz component. So now that we've viewed it, we can just remove this scaling factor from our plot signal function. I'm just going to clean this over here and then we're going to dive straight into developing the convolution algorithm. So let's do that now. So because this particular function has five arguments, rather than write the entire function header horizontally, I'm going to arrange it vertically so that it's more visible. So I'm going to start by saying void convolution. The name of the function is convolution. It returns a void, which means it returns nothing. And I'm going to come over here and then I'm going to close and then I'm going to hit enter like this. And I'm going to have this here like this. And over here, the first argument is the pointer to the source signal array so sig underscore src underscore arr this is the name we give to the source signal array in our course the second argument is going to be where to store the convolved signal the result so i'm going to say double and this is going to be sig dst for destination sig underscore dst underscore arr for destination array and the third is going to be the array that contains the impulse response. So this is also of type double. And this is going to be IMP underscore response underscore array response like this underscore ARR. And then the fourth argument is going to be the length of the source signal. And this is just a 32 bit integer we can pass over here u into 32 and I'm going to say sig underscore source underscore length like this and the fourth argument is going to be the length of the impulse response and I'm going to say u int 32 underscore t underscore imp underscore response underscore length underscore length like this 
And now that we have our function header, let's write the actual function. And this is based on the convolution sum algorithm we saw in our theoretical class. Like everything else, it's strictly based on the theory. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know. Yeah. So let's move on. We can start by creating a number of local variables to help us. And these are going to be used as iterators mostly. U int 8 underscore T. And we can have I and J here like this. We can first start by initializing the destination array to zero. And remember, when we perform the convolution, the destination array is going to be the, um, the length of the input signal plus the impulse response. So that's the size of the destination array. So to initialize such an array, and we're writing a function here. Um, so to initialize such an array, we can say i equals zero, i is less than signal underscore src underscore arr. This is the source signal underscore length. What did we call this? We call this source length, sorry, not arr source length plus impulse response length because that's the length of the destination array imp underscore response underscore length and then once we say this then we can say i plus plus so we're going to iterate for this number of elements right and within this for loop we can just say sig destination array equals zero sig underscore dst D E S D A R R I equals zero. So we've initialized the destination array. So now let's write the actual convolution algorithm. So we can start by saying for J equals zero, J is less than signal source length, J plus plus. And this is the outer loop, the inner loop then we're going to come here and say, um, yeah, just to maintain the convention, let's just change this iterator to i, right? So I'm just going to say for i equals zero, i is less than signal source length i plus plus. We often use the i for outer loop and j for inner loop. So let's just keep that language, yeah? So I'll come in here and say for j equals for j equals zero and j is less than the impulse response length j plus plus j equals zero and j is less than the imp response underscore length j plus plus and now we are here now we can perform the convolution sum and all we need to do is signal destination signal destination array which is where the result is going to be kept sig underscore dst underscore arr array index i plus j and first we need to accumulate so we're going to do this again equals sig underscore dst underscore arr underscore arr index i plus j to accumulate first and then this plus signal source array i source array index i, that's what I mean by i, times the impulse response array j, as simple as that, times imp underscore response underscore arr underscore j, uh, index j, like this. Very simple. This is it. Signal destination array index i plus j equals signal destination array index i plus j plus signal source array index i times impulse response array index j. And then j is the inner loop, i is the outer loop. Very simple. So this is it. This is all there is for the convolution algorithm. So let's take the prototype of this function up and then test this function and see if indeed we are able to successfully perform the convolution. So I'm going to put the prototype of this function here. I'm just going to keep it vertically like this.